<laughs> Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Food Ways, this amazing theater that's hosting us every month. Uh, welcome to the International Women Artists Salon Showcase. Today we are showcasing five artists and they are honoring women in history or women that have inspired them. We'll have first, coming on stage, Vanessa Morrison. Ooh. She's a graduate Ooh. from Five Towns College in the with a BA in film and television production. Vanessa began her professional journey in 2010, currently working as camera assistant of the hit show The Blacklist. She works to maintain kickstand productions along with her parents. Primarily focused on her talent as DP, Vanessa looks forward to showcasing one of her biggest short film projects, Paradox Theory, currently in post-production. Nice. Welcome to Vanessa. Woo! Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not used to being in front of the light, in front of the camera and lights. Um, so the honoree I wanted to uh, acknowledge today was actually a business partner. She's running late, but um, her name is Sable Fields. She is a producer for BET. She's been a producer for MTV, VH1, Fuse. And why she inspires me is because not only is she a uh, minority black and uh, black in the business, but she's a woman, obviously. <laughs> and she's just the the journey that she's made from being hired from an intern to now being a producer, a one month producer in that world is just phenomenal. She's excellent, excellent at her job, and she's a great partner. Um, yeah, nice. stable feels. And, and then I'm just gonna start playing my projects. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> the first one I actually collaborated with her. Um, it is a short film, and hope you enjoy it. cheating on you. Okay. I haven't been happy in so long. Okay, in the beginning, I wasn't sure if it was something you did or, or I did, and... I haven't been happy. And I used to blame myself and you. Maybe you didn't love me anymore, or maybe it's because I wasn't satisfied. Either way, I stopped caring. No, Abe, it's too late. It's too late for any of this. I, I didn't want to come here tonight, but I felt it was the decent thing to do, to at least let you know why I've been absent, the same way you've been distant. Are you satisfied? You must be. I mean, why else would you have done it? You must be, and I know you weighed the consequences out beforehand. You're way too precise not to. I'm happy. Now, I am. She makes me happy. She doesn't ignore me. Anything else? I loved you, and you ignored me. Okay, you paid attention to everything but me.
but that's the past. Now, I'm content. She's insatiable. And she tastes like love shit. Satisfying. Your sister's great. represent with your body like your energy your soul your being and um, this one I should have spoke a little bit more about that with the other one but it's okay uh, this one was directed by another partner of mine and he came up with this idea with his fellow friend who choreographed it and is the dancer in this and I said why not this sounds amazing sounds fun is different and I hope you enjoy it I love tempo. When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall, and in the back of my mind, I hear a conscience call, telling me I need a boy who's as sweet as a dove. For the first time in my life, I see I need love. There I was, giggling about the games that I had played with many hearts, and I'm not saying the names. Then the thought of curves yet drops me, my eyes burn. As I said to myself, when am I gonna learn? I can feel it inside. I can't explain how it feels. All I know is that I'm a condition of the world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
um, our next uh, guest and artist is uh, Sara Sutliff. Yeah. Yeah. She will of course do some theater for us. She's great, I know her. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sara Sutliff is a Brooklyn based actress and teaching artist. A graduate of uh, Wagner College, Sarah recently studied at Stella Adler at the Pro Theatre Conservatory. She's a resident performer and educator at the Gary Theatre in New York, and an actress with the Murder Mystery Company. Welcome, Sarah. I could have stood up here and monologued for all of you, but I didn't want to do that, so helping me out is my, my dear friend, Greer Samuels. Hello. Hey. <laughs> also performs and teaches with me at the Galley Theatre. Um, so the woman artist that I'm going to be honoring is an American playwright named Cindy Lou Johnson. I don't want to say too much about her because I want her work to speak for itself. We're going to be doing an excerpt from her most famous play, Brilliant Traces, um, which premiered at the Cherry Lane Theater here in New York in uh, 1989, starring Joan Cusack and Kevin Anderson. Um, she's a really amazing playwright. Not only is she a woman who started out writing fiction uh, and magically made her way into off-Broadway theater, um, but she also has written for HBO, and she writes really strong, complex female characters. Um, her list of plays is in your programs, if you want to look that over. All of her plays either have more female characters or are equally split male to female, which I find really beautiful. And so I hope you enjoy this excerpt of her play, Brilliant Traces. <laughs> Um, how come you're not getting married? What? Well, what happened? Did you get a telegram informing you that your fiancé was wanted for murder in Nevada, or that he was already seven other women in seven other states, or that he used to be a woman, or what? No. No, nothing like that. Then what? I just... I was just... What? Look! Listen, I'm not standing here, for one. If you could understand that simple fact, then perhaps you could see I am in no position to say why I didn't go through the wedding. You're not standing here. No, I'm not. You are just in no position at this time to say why you didn't go through with the wedding because you're not standing here. Yes. You're not here. No. Actually, no. You're just not here. Okay. That's, that's fine. That's all right. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you seem to be here to me, but, you know, whatever. Just, just one thing, okay? And I mean, you... You don't need to be here in order to tell me this, okay? Just tell me from wherever you are, okay? Just tell me what happened. What do you mean? I mean, you know, what happened? You arrived here in a wedding gown, so I assume you were fairly close to getting married on the verge, so... What happened? Just tell me, how do you go from being on the verge to my door? I'm not asking for anything complicated. I'm, I don't want to know why you left, okay? I don't need to know any of that. I just want to know how, you know? How you left? What, did, did you stand up and say, I, I've changed my mind, I need time to think? I, I No! Do the, no? No, I didn't stand up and say anything. Then what did you do? I had a problem with my feet. Feet. Yes. My feet would not move forward. I was standing in the back of the church and my feet would not move. Uh huh. Yeah. But, um. What exactly did you do? You did, I'm, I'm just trying to get sort of a picture. You know, I, I, I mean, what exactly did you do with this 
foot problem. I just... I kept looking at the back of his head. That's all. <laughs> he was standing up at the altar and... See the back of his head. He wears his hair very short, so it's very soft back there. And my heart just went out to him. I mean, my heart opened, and something inside me wanted to rush out to him. Something was fluttering inside me, desperate to reach him, but I was frozen and not moving. I could not move. That's all. That's all? Yes. Well, you must have moved. You're here. Your heart can break, you know. It's a real thing. It cracks and splits, and all this warm fluid comes out, and you can't move or speak or think because your veins are filled with it. I just stood there, looking at him. But I saw him differently. Differently than what? Than I'd ever seen him before. How'd you see him? Disconnected, hovering, alone, lonely, just like me. Just like me, but I was awake and he was asleep. That was the difference. He was asleep. I felt I had to whisper. I felt that pain and loneliness, you know, life had put him to sleep forever, so we had to be very careful and whisper because if he woke up, he would wake up screaming like me, <laughs> screaming. And I looked all over the church at all those other people, fast asleep, dead asleep, asleep forever and ever, because everyone, if they woke up, would wake up screaming. No, no one wants to wake up here. This is a quiet place. People are trying to sleep here. People are trying to get some rest here in this life. Be quiet, because everyone, if they wake, will wake screaming. And I thought, wake up, you traitors! Don't leave me alone! But I whispered, because my heart went out to them. My heart hurt, so I whispered, and it was too much. Something was exploding out of me, and all the while I was whispering. I knew I was in trouble. I thought, I'm gonna be sick. Right here, right now, I will be sick. So I just took four or five steps backwards out of the church, just into the air. But it was so hot and I was so dizzy. So I went to my car just to sit down. And then I thought, I'll just drive around the parking lot just so some fresh air will blow on me. But once I started driving, I couldn't stop. I was just blasting ahead. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash into space. And then my car died. And now I'm here. I see. That's how I left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You were in a state. What? You were in the church, in some kind of state. I was not in a state. You were screaming, you were sick, you were in trouble. No. I just walked backwards. I didn't make a sound. I just walked backwards until I was out the door, until I was in my car, and then I started driving just for air. You said you were in trouble. I was very quiet. Okay. Fine. You were very quiet. Yes. So you just quietly withdrew? Yes. And you didn't say anything? When? When you left. You didn't say, just a minute, I need some air? Oh, no. No, I didn't. You just withdrew? Quietly. And everyone was still in the church? In the church? Just sitting there? You didn't disturb anyone? No. Not a soul. No one even noticed me go. And he was still up there? At the altar? Your fiancé just standing there? That's, that's how you left things? Yes. And you haven't thought of calling him? Calling him? Yes! I, I mean to let him know where you are so he wouldn't worry. Oh. No. 
No, I have not. <clears throat> no. But, don't you think, considering the circumstances of your departure, didn't you ever think of calling him? What for? Well, let's think this through a minute. You just left a church full of people waiting for you to walk up the aisle. I had to get out of there. Okay, fine, all right. But don't you think that they're concerned? I mean, don't you think that he very specifically is concerned? I don't know! You don't know? No, I don't know what concerns other people. You don't know what concerns other people? No! Well, I can tell you that if you were in a church getting ready to walk up the aisle, that I Look, wouldn't Brent, do that. Brent, you can't tell me anything. You don't have any more idea what Bronco thinks about than I do. Bronco? It's his nickname. <laughs> Bronco? He's from Texas. <laughs> What's his real name? Walpole? <laughs> Walpole? <laughs> Walpole what? Walpole Witherworth? <laughs> <laughs> You almost became Mrs. <laughs> Walpole Bronco Weatherwood? Don't for Pete's sake. You can. Whatever happened, you, you can. I'm a weak person. I'm a very weak person. History Month, or as we used to call it in the 1970s, her story. Um, I'm a mid-centurion, but I'm dedicating this piece to a millennial who used to be my <laughs> next door neighbor. She was also a part-time babysitter, although she was often late because she was running to and from therapy appointments. Sometimes she'd forget my keys. Usually she'd forget her own keys. Sometimes she forgot her own pants. She was racked with anxiety and insecurity, and we kind of thought she'd be living next door to us forever. But six years later, from now, from then, she's brilliant, she's creative, she is one of the voices of her generation, she's politically important, she's Lena Dunham. Wow. Um, I myself am also often racked with insecurity and anxiety. For me, uh, singing has always been one of those trigger points. I take you to 1978, John Dewey High School, somewhere in Coney Island. Um, I'm asked to audition for the lead in Bye Bye Birdie, the musical. In 3,600 students, I am one of the whitest people, but the drama <laughs> teacher thinks that I can play Rosie. She's fiery, she's feisty, she's funny, she's smart, she's Puerto Rican. <laughs> I can wear a wig. Uh, the problem is my singing. 
So I go high in the chorus somewhere in the woodwind section, think I'm safe, and then I hear, Miss Hunter, uh -huh. are you chewing gum? <laughs> yeah. So I mumble, take it out of your mouth. <laughs> Never mind, you sing better with it in. <laughs> so I stick to check off Tennessee Williams, anything without singing, and then at 15 I convince my parents that I am ready to be a serious theatrical actress and I need to go to acting camp. So, I find myself in Lock Sheldrake, New York at Stage Door Manor. I'm finally surrounded by my people. They're pale, precocious, non-athletic performers. I am Catherine Hepburn. And I am drowning in a sea of Liza Minnelli's and Barbara Streisand <laughs> and Stephen Sondheim's. It's a musical theater camp. <laughs> funny and happy and break into song at a moment's notice and I flee what I think is their, their shallowness for my room where I throw myself into Euripides, Trojan women. I am going to play Hecuba. I stopped showering for a week so I understand what the filth and the pain of war is like. I find my niche. I tackle all of the non-singing roles. I receive best actress and best supporting actress in non-singing roles until I get the nod from Jack Romano, my mentor, the director of the camp. He's this feisty, asthmatic, tiny Cuban immigrant. He spits when he's excited, he spits when he's angry. I usually get spat upon with praise, and this time he says, Jew are ready to play Sally Balls in cabaret. <laughs> the musical cabaret? Yes, you can act this. <laughs> No, no, I can't. I feel the bile, the gas, my already unstable intestinal tract is starting to run riot, and I back out and again find myself in the chorus. College, I stick to Pinter, Shepard, Stoppard, I avoid a cappella groups, all musicals. I graduate, I'm ready for New York City theater. I'm going to tackle the gritty character roles on stage. My agent, so that I'm ready for soap operas and commercials. I'm an auctioneer. <laughs> Considering my stress and anxiety levels, commercials turned out to be okay place, nice people, no singing. I get called back for a really big commercial back when you could make a lot of money from commercials and there are a lot of residuals and it's a very very busy casting director and I get in the room and of course I'm anxious because I'm always anxious but I'm ready and the clients say so we changed the specs a little bit mm -hmm. you're a singer <laughs> <laughs> I say no I'm not and they say you're in the choir it's fine just sing a little I say, no I say just sing a no <laughs> I am blacklisted from this very busy casting oh. director's office for the next 25 oh. years oh. in those 25 years I get married I stay married I <laughs> uh, major abdominal surgery, I do not sing, I have multiple miscarriages, oh. I survive a massive audit, I do not sing, I <laughs> give birth to a live baby child that I then have to parent, but I am not going to sing. About two years ago, some friends of mine, they organize a harmless karaoke night. <laughs> They're nice people. I like them. I like hanging out with them. But I want to be clear, I was not going to sing. I said, I'll drink, I'll heckle you, I'll help you choose songs, but I'm not singing. A couple weeks after that, I'm finally naked in my bathroom for the first time after a very long, cold winter, and I noticed this a lump. But it's probably no big deal because Breast cancer doesn't run in my family. My mammogram was fine. I've got lumpy breasts. I'm anxious, but I mean, I'm always anxious. So at least I can go to the doctor and get another Ativan prescription. Yeah. So I go to the doctor for the routine and visit, and I get the Ativan prescription. And I also get a list of surgeons' names and hospitals and possible procedures. And I'm fast tracked for a biopsy. And then in the middle of all that madness, it's karaoke night. Mm. <laughs> I figure, well, at least I can get drunk and hang out with my friends. One vodka tonic later, and I'm singing my ass. <laughs> and I suck. <laughs> but I'm building out 
Roach, Van Halen, Van Morrison, <laughs> Patti Smith, Violent Femmes. I'm terrible. I'm grabbing the mic when it's not even my turn. <laughs> but my anxiety is gone. I feel awesome. Two years later, two new boobs later, I am still singing, although in the privacy of my own home, I'm still really, really bad. My dog tolerates it very well. My husband and child, not so much. My child, who has perfect pitch, says, Mom, please stop. But you know what? I don't. I go to the roof. I take the dog with me. I find out that singing is good for you. And not only that, apparently show tunes help fight dementia. <laughs> so I tackle Sondheim. Yay! And then I get caught. My son hears me and he says, Mom, yeah, keep going. I do. I finish the song. I get critiqued. I'm still really bad. Next day we're walking to school, 8, 10 a.m. in the morning, Canal and Greenwich Street, when I usually launch into a 15-minute diatribe about how he needs to pay attention, he needs to finish his lunch, he needs to listen to the teacher, he needs to focus, he needs to breathe deeply. If other kids start to bother him, it's the usual harassment. <laughs> this time I throw Journey at him. <laughs> he doesn't recoil, he joins in. For the next 15 minutes, we're belting out, don't stop believing. I'm critiqued again because I'm still really, really bad, but it feels really good, and we're bonding, and I'm not nagging him, and I'm not anxious, and I'm not putting my anxiety, anxiety onto him, and it took me 35 years to realize that these musical theater people were happy. Maybe they weren't shallow, hmm. and that's okay, because life can suck sometimes, but singing, especially bad singing, <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. So sing if anyone is in the closet, get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so our next um, artist is uh, Grace uh, Kanawati. Yes, I said it right. Uh, before introducing her, I would like to pass on a hat. Uh, what? It will be coming. It will be coming. It will be coming <laughs> by itself. It's a magic hand. So Grace, Grace Kenawati is a comedian, actress, and writer. She's Middle Eastern and Hispanic. She wrote her first play, Asaya and Lila, and is currently workshopping her own, her one woman show, Consuelo Explains It All. <laughs> uh, and Grace uh, was an NBC Universal, the People, the Pit Diversity Showcase finalist, and part of Revolución Latina community. So. Come on in. Um, the woman that I like to honor is Nicole Tung. She is a journalist and um, she spent her first year at NYU, her um, spring break, she went to Bosnia and actually took pictures of people and what happened you know, years after the war. And the reason she's inspiring is because she goes out there to Syria, the Arab Spring, to, you know, takes pictures of child soldiers. And uh, you know, as a woman going to those places, as you all know, uh, you know, you, so many things can happen besides you know being kidnapped or getting killed. So that's very inspiring. Um, so I really like her a lot, and you know, she's very young, and she really goes out there and goes out of her way. You could see her work in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. So she's very inspiring. And I like to keep up with what she's doing. Um, so I'm going to perform a little something from my one woman show. Let me tell you that being a girl is hard. But being a girl in an all-girls Catholic high school is otra cosa, yo. Ya tu sabes, we're not well-behaved young ladies getting a Catholic education. Everyone in the school is crazy. We got Bosnian, we got Serbian, we got Albanian, we got Polish, Croatian, Dominican, Puerto Rican, Indian, girls from Jersey. <laughs> now that's a lot going on. <laughs> and sorpresa, 
we don't all get along. <laughs> when the Albanian girls started beef with the Serbian girls, I had no idea why until I started paying attention during Eastern European history class. <laughs> I've learned a lot from these girls and I've grown to love them. Pero Dios mío, God forbid I get into a fight with one of these gata psychos. <laughs> <laughs> After school, they start fights with girls with other Catholic high schools over boys. Escucha esto, que show, okay? They put Vaseline all over the face so it doesn't get scratched. Yo no me arruino la cara por ningún muchacho. I don't believe in violence especially over a boy. But what can I say? These girls keep me entertained. Now the teachers in the school, son otra cosa. <laughs> Miss Rose, a young Irish lady who is obsessed with her Puerto Rican boyfriend. Seriously, lady? We're all mostly Puerto Rican in this class, and the only thing our Puerto Rican boyfriends give us are headaches. <laughs> Pero ya tu sabes, she's all excited with her Latin lover. Hi, <laughs> <Ay>, mommy. <laughs> Just your way. Dolor de cabeza. She talks about how they go riding horses together. Meanwhile, we've been on Macbeth for five weeks now. Oh, God. <laughs> God, you know, she should teach that then. <laughs> Mr. Brown is obsessed with Honduras. I think he wants to be that dude from a mosquito coast or something. Mm -hmm. I'm say. <laughs> Mr. Angel, our math teacher, likes to stand at the bottom of the stairs and stare up girl skirts. Pero que nasty, eh? Ese sí que es un asco. <laughs> Nobody likes to get tutored by him. <laughs> this is why I don't believe in all girls' schools, because perverts. And girls go crazy without boys. <laughs> <laughs> we have an old boys' brother school. They call us hoes on a hill. <laughs> <laughs> our school's on a hill. <laughs> you know, whatever, I don't care what those stupid boys be saying, like, they're not even cute. Which reminds me, I gotta find Tweety, my boyfriend. <laughs> no contesta su teléfono. He ain't answering my calls. I even called his mom. You think I'm gonna stand for that? Seriously? He probably up there with some sucia. With some hoe. Are you kidding me? Leaving me for some nasty girl from the Bronx. Not that there's anything wrong with girls from the Bronx, but are you kidding me? <laughs> Why was so stupid? I don't stand for this. He knows I don't stand for this. Whatever. I don't do me. I ain't one of those girls who be crying for no man. I do me. Did I tell you? I found this spot that says girls who cold. It's a summer camp that teaches girls how to do stuff on the computer free, gratis. Yeah. Mm. And you know what? Everybody in my neighborhood is always putting me down, putting doubt in my head. They think I'm going nowhere in life. But sabes que? I'll show them. I got into the program, and my friends thought I was stupid because I spent the whole summer indoors instead of going to the beach. Some of these girls aren't even going to college. I'm going to get a scholarship, and I'm going to go to college. I'm going to be one of those girls who cold. <laughs> because yeah. after that summer camp, Consuelo se puso las pilas. Computer science, get ready, because I'm about to take over. OK? <laughs> Yo, that's the bell. I got a jet, because after school, I got to hustle to make save up money for college. My friend Beatrice just hooked me up with this new gig. She said, all you got to do is clean this dude's house, and you'll be making mucho dinero. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Only thing is, I hate to clean. <laughs> it gets my nails are busted, and then I feel busted, and I just don't feel good. <laughs> Tweety always gives me money for my nails. Pero como no lo encuentro, I gotta take care of myself. <laughs> Ese tonto. <laughs> Finally, after a long while. <laughs> Hello, I'm here to clean. Hello, are you from New York City? Like, born and raised, not Long Island. No. <laughs> uh, yes, I am. So, uh, what do you want me to clean for you, Bobby? <laughs> Poppy. That's Spanish, right? 
I'm here for hot chicks. You look like a hot chick. I want to talk to you. See, I'm just a London boy. Can't believe I'm here in New York City. The people in the city are just amazing. I've got this room with a view of the water, and it's just fantastic. I feel like a rock star. I'm like Jay Z, and I want you to be my hot chick. Yes. Oh, believable. Look at this view. <laughs> I mean, I don't get this in London. Who would imagine me? I make a ton of money, and I spend it on myself, of course. My family thinks I'm a huge sellout. My sister's a teacher. My mom does a lot of volunteer work, and my dad's practically a priest. But I just want to live and enjoy life. And I feel like I can do anything. Like, I'm a god, now that I have you here, mommy. That's right, is that how you say it? I got myself a mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Have I upset you? Unbelievable! See, I'm just a boy from London and haven't been out much and it would mean so much to me if she just gave me a little kiss. Or just a picture so I could show my mates back home all the hot chicks I was with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> London girls pretend to be all posh, but New York girls are much more comfortable with sex. <laughs> Would you like to have sex? <laughs> <laughs> because I'd really like to have sex with you. I mean, only in New York do you get a house cleaning with a happy ending with a house cleaning with a Hispanic school girl. <laughs> Hello? Where did she go? <laughs> <laughs> I had to get out of there. What was I do thinking? Do you want to have sex? <laughs> London boy was giving me the creeps. Yo, speaking of the creeps, who I say so? This dude have a song has been following for the past 20 minutes. Estoy harta! <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna get scared. I'm gonna turn the tables around and act like I'm crazy so I scare him away. That's what I'm gonna do. Hey, mommy, you looking good. You want me to walk you home? Thank you, but no thank you. Why are you being all shy for? I know you don't want me to leave. You just be playing hard to get. Oh, yeah. Do you really want me to, do you really want to walk me home? Because I got problems. I like to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the show Dexter? Eso no es nada. <laughs> I cut bad people into little pieces, roll them up in rice, and sell them as cannibal sushi. <laughs> and trust me, it's a thing. <laughs> and that's only my side job. My real passion is to rob. Ya tu sabe. You won't give you a whole premium. <laughs> here I go, here I go, here I go. Okay, girls, what's our weakness to kill? Okay, then, kill it, kill it. I looked around and I couldn't believe this. I swear, I said, nobody my witness. I stabbed the dude, now I feel kind of, ooh, wicked, wicked. Had to kick him. Got shy, so I asked for forgiveness. Get no, that don't make me see what I want. Cut his throat, do it swiftly. So I dip back to my bag of tricks, then I flip for a tip. Wanna, me, wanna do tricks for him? Kick up like a naughty boy should be kicked. Came to my senses and I chill for a bit. Don't know how you do the voodoo that you do so well. Hell, it's a spell, makes you wanna shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> so, Bobby, you still want to walk me home? <laughs> nah, I'm good, freak. <laughs> Consuelo and Tweety together forever. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah Fredkin and the other one is Vera Tse. 
and they can show you the pictures. We have also uh, two of the paintings here. I don't know, would you like to come on stage? Yeah. No? Yeah. <laughs> we also have um, another visual artist. She's sitting also with her. Oh, all the visual artists are like hiding uh, <laughs> there. Patrice is over there. Raise your hand, Patrice. <laughs> okay, she's not hiding. <laughs> uh, Patrice Payne is a Brooklyn based visual artist and an educator. After receiving her um, an MA in Art and Design Education from RISD in 2010, she has worked for several organizations designing and instructing art curricula while developing her own artistic career. Her work has been featured in several several exhibitions throughout the Northeast. You can find her at patricepain.com. <laughs> Thank you, um, thank you for the International Women's Artist Salon for having me present in Dixon Place. Um, I want to say that the woman artist that I honored tonight, tonight is um, Elizabeth Catlett. Um, she was a graphic artist, printmaker, and a sculptor. And um, I really um, admired her piece, uh, the Negro Woman series, um, because she showed um, the resilience and strength of women um, prior to the Civil Rights Movement. Um, and that's something that I envision in my own work. Um, the two pieces I have here tonight are from a series called Bloom that I created um, from 2011 to 2015. And um, the first piece in the front on the, on the stand um, is done in watercolor. Um, and the second piece behind it is done in pen and pencil. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me after the show. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. So you can now go around and mingle and talk and have some drinks. Leah will be very happy to help you with that. <laughs> and ask the artists about their work they, because we love to talk about ourselves. I didn't talk about myself. So I am Patricia Cardona Roca and I'm hosting tonight and I am part of the International Women Artists Salon. I'm helping them with some things. I think you're okay She's the founder of the International Women Artists Salon. We can do this uh, every month. Her and Dixon Place. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Uh, and let's get a great hand to Patricia for her. Yeah. Um, before we start mingling, I'd like to have all the artists come up on stage. Can you come up on stage? Uh, you're up here now. Um, so, but I just want to mention that this is one of our series. It's monthly, as Patricia mentioned, uh, the third Saturday of every month, except for April. Next month is going to be on Friday, the yeah, 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 28th, I think it is, at 9 o'clock, uh, because they have a, a special main stage show on the third Saturday. But normally it's the third Saturday of every month, so we're hoping that you all become regular. This is, I think, our biggest house so far. So, woo! Um, and uh, we also have a weekly radio show, so on Thursday nights on cityworldradio.net, no, excuse me, .com. And um, we feature a woman-owned or founded or run arts organization, group, or special project, as well as a 10-minute individual artist, any discipline. And we give a little world bulletin what's happening for women creatives around the world. Uh, and then we also have uh, what's called Salon Solo, which is a, a visual art exhibition series that's ongoing at our other partner venue at Producers Club up on West 44th Street at 9th Avenue. And uh, right now there's a group show going on, um, but normally it's a solo show that we like to try to give a, a visual artist uh, a solo show in New York. So those are our three main programs. We have many other things going on. Uh, Emma here is one of our visual artists, uh, who's also a Producers Club. <laughs> in China, but she's in New York for a couple months, so we're glad that she's here. And uh, she has some flyers that we're going to hand out if you haven't received one yet. Um, and we have on April 3rd our second ever Salon Creative Lounge, and it's a full day of workshops and discussions and panels and networking for women creatives. Uh, so hopefully all of you women out there will come join us. Um, it's $16 for the day. It's 
going to give uh, all full, uh, like 16 different workshops to choose from, two panels about uh, building parity as well as building audience. Across. Lots of things going on during the year. We hope that you become, follow us on our, our fan page, International Women Artists Salon. Follow us on Twitter, Women Art Salon. If you'd like to partner with us, become a member, sponsor us um, <laughs> in kind or in cash. Um, <laughs> in cash. Send uh, an email to me, which is on the back of the program. Uh, so thank you again for being with us here tonight. Thank you to all our artists. Woo! And please stay and mingle. Uh, you know, tip uh, Leo, Leo well over here. And again, thank you to Books and Plays.